Hi, welcome to the latest video blog of Pencil and Spoon. I'm Mark, and we've got a special one for you today, hence the suit and shirt and tie. We've even had a shave, had my hair cut, uh, and shoes. So what we're doing is this. We're opening a bottle of West Blatterran 12, which has been, for as long as I've known about beer, which has been the best beer in the world. So what we're going to do is have a chat about that today and um, have a discussion about kind of the psychology behind opening the best beer in the world. So what we do first of all is we'll get it open straight away. Nice pop of the cap over spilling. And there's the bottle top for you. Nice. Let's get it poured out. I want to get it out early just in case it's a bit lively. Now this is brewed with a pale malt uh, Northern Brewer hops and there's dark candy sugar in there. It's unfiltered and it uses a West Mal yeast and then um, it's bottle conditioned afterwards. So there it is. It's a really deep, oh, I can smell it from here. It's a really deep, russet, dark, dark brown. Mm, huge, complex nose. Let's move on to that in a bit. Well, I can just let it settle just in case it's a bit too carbonated because I don't want it to be too, you know too fizzy. Um, what I'm interested in though is the psychology behind having the best beer in the world. Now as I said for as long as I've known about beer this has always been number one. So therefore I've, r I've raised it up in my mind to be this incredible beer, this, this uh, you know, the best beer in the world. But is it? And what also I want to say is, what I also wanted to know is, is my prior knowledge of this beer going to change my perception of it when I actually drink it? Am I going to raise it into a beer that's better than perhaps it actually is, purely because so many other people have said that this is such a good beer. Okay, so let's have a smell, it's huge, huge dried fruits, huge. It's kind of earthy, lots of candy sugar and dark sugar. I had the eight the other day and while I wasn't underwhelmed by it, I certainly wasn't overwhelmed by it and there is a certain similarity actually in in the aroma from this, this is just so much more, so much fuller, so much bigger. Right. Mm, wow. It's very, there's so much going on. Everything I've read about this has said how complex it is and that's certainly the first word which comes to mind. It's all dried fruits. It's boozy, it's earthy, there's something almost woody and tannic about it. It's so many flavours going on in there. There's, uh, it's, it's probably a little bit too fizzy at the moment for my taste. I certainly don't like beers like this uh, over carbonated because they just kind of get that, that spritzing on your palate. And I certainly, I, I don't think that that helps the beer in any way. So maybe we'll give it another few seconds. But that's certainly, a, that's certainly a good beer, but the best beer. I know it's so it's so difficult to it's so difficult to put one up the top. I think the reason that it comes at the top um, and has done for so long is it has to be consistency. So many people have, vo have voted this um, highly and consistently highly throughout. You know, for as long as websites such as Beer Advocate and Rate Beer have been around, it's just always you know it's always been up there and done well. But you know, is it? Um, does the beer's name kind of precede it in a way um, and does the name raise it up to give it these these big scores or is the beer actually worthy of it I mean it would probably take to be honest it would probably take me the whole glass to really formulate my own uh, opinion of it and be able to decide whether or not I think it's one of the best beers in the world I certainly won't go and say that it is the best beer in the world because I don't think that's what these ratings actually tell you I think they tell you that it's consistently ranked as such a high beer rather than it being you know the one beer which is better than any other. Okay, let's give it another try. It's all prunes and dark cherries and rum flavours. Mm. Seriously good beer. Serious amount of depth. The flavour just keeps on going and going and going. Um, it's kind of it's nice and it's not syrupy, but it's not it's not thin, so there's definitely a lot of fullness in the mouth as well. So, well, well, I'm going to go and finish this off. Um, 
and then afterwards, I guess we'll be able to tell what my uh, what my actual opinion of it is. But I mean, I'll, I'll write some more about it. So have a look at the blog afterwards. I'll write about. I mean, another reason that this beer I forgot to mention earlier. Another reason this beer is raised up so high is because it's so difficult to get hold of. You can only get hold of it at certain days, and you have to ring up within a short window of time and pick it up within a short window, and only from the brewery because they only brew enough to sustain themselves. It's not like they're um, a mass brewery just churning out all these beers. So I mean, that adds to kind of the legend and the myth of the beer. So, but I mean, I'll write about that in the blog. So check that out and yeah, and see what I see what I think come the end of this. But there we are. West Is it the best beer in the world? Who knows? Cheers.